Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley Jenkins. I'm Elise Willems. And 2016 was supposed to be the year of virtual reality. Instead, it was apparently the year of virtual disappointment. Mwah, mwah. Yeah, after a year marred by poor sales and majorly downgraded projections, VR is taking yet another hit because it looks like the CEO of Oculus, Brendan Erib, is stepping down from the role as head of the company. But it's got nothing to do with nobody buying an Oculus Rift, honest. Mm -hmm. uh, Erib will now be moving to head up a newly created division with an Oculus, which will focus on pushing PC development forward. Yeah, the title change is framed as a sign that VR is scaling faster than ever, uh -huh. but given the medium's recent fumbles, could it also be a sign that VR is in trouble? Well, maybe it's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Uh, Erib made the announcement via a blog post last night, right? Changing the world on that scale has required us to also scale Oculus at warp speed. With our growth and product strategy, we've decided to establish new PC and mobile VR groups to be more focused, strengthen development, and accelerate our roadmap. Fire I just always think of him as like be as speaking very PR y. Yeah. <laughs> he's very yeah. much like he's very much like a marketing and brand yeah, guy. Like, but a really intense, like with like space illusions and stuff like that. Yeah. Which I like. I'm all about that. That warp speed. <laughs> uh, after writing that he would be the one to lead the new PC. C group, Iri went on to say, you do your best work when you love what you're working on. If that's not the case, you need to make a change. With this new role, I can dive back into engineering and product development. That's what gets me up every day, inspired to run to work. That and uh, probably all the sweet VR money. Yeah. According to the Post, John Thomason, the recent addition to the Oculus team from Microsoft, will be heading up the company's new mobile division. As for the question of who will fill the now vacant position of CEO, well, from the sound of it, that might not happen at all, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> We're all on home improvement now. Reeb indicates in the post that there will be a new leader for Oculus, but it'll probably be someone who's embedded within Facebook rather than a traditional CEO. So Facebook wants more of a say in how Oculus is run, uh, which makes sense seeing as how they own the place. Yeah, much. and seeing as how they probably want it to go way more social. So Oculus Rift, now with more fake news and month old memes. <laughs> That's the direction we're going. Bread and butter here. At the <laughs> it's a little hard to tell what exactly this means for Oculus and its business going forward. The move could mean any number of things for the company whose signature product, which for those who are somehow unaware is the Rift headset, has struggled to generate the type of buzz that many industry and analysts predicted at the start of the year. Market research firm Superdata kicked off 2016 by predicting that VR as a medium would bring in more than $5 billion in revenue by end of year. I mean, to be fair, we all kind of laughed at that number when they said it anyway, but that's what the prediction was. Yeah, and we're poor, so <laughs> <laughs> that's a funny number to us. Uh, but then they downgraded that number to $3.6 billion, a paltry sum, right. in March. Really, <laughs> why do you get out of bed yeah. and run to work in the morning for just $3.6 <laughs> no. billion? And then a pauper is $2.9 billion in April. By November, they basically said fuck it with projections and simply declared VR the biggest loser of the holidays thanks to poor Black Friday sales. Womp, womp, womp. Uh, in general, we don't really know much about the hard sales numbers for Oculus Rift in its competition because they haven't exactly announced them, but right now the data points to PlayStation VR already outselling both Rift and Vive headsets combined after just a couple months on the market. Part of the problem for VR platforms has been a lack of AAA games, but then we've also had a lot of recent reports which don't seem to promise a lot of big success for any developers thinking about dabbling in VR themselves. Yeah, is it really worth it? We don't know yet. Yeah, because yeah. here's the thing is games are made for the most part there, there are a couple of lovely stories of individuals making games, but for the most part, they're a business. And for a business, you have to be able to make money. It's sort of the way that goes. You gotta get the quiche. Uh, but PC Gamer, I love, <laughs> I love the quiche too. <laughs> PC Gamer just published an article today about Eerie Bear Games the developer who lost nearly $40,000 and sold only 2,000 copies of their Vive launch title, Light Repair Team Number 4. That hurts. Um, well, to be fair, has anyone heard of Light Repair Team Number 4? We should ask or Ryan. Or 1 through 3. Yeah, what happened to the other teams? We don't games? know. <laughs> what happened to, where are the other teams? Yeah. What was their fate? Maybe that's what the game is who about. Who do you work for? There's also Crytek, who despite releasing Robinson the Journey, is struggling to pay their employees again. <laughs> to be fair, they made a lot of bad moves and games. Well, before they started working on VR, but it certainly didn't help them move the needle. And part of the reason developers are hesitant to commit AAA kind of resources to VR development is because it's not cheap. Epic CEO Tim Sweeney recently revealed that their Rift exclusive title, Robo Recall, has a budget as high as a Gears of War game did last generation. That is a lot. Whoa, and all those bro bucks. <laughs> we don't have those kind of bro bucks, only Gears does. So what is, where, does your game have a chainsaw gun? No, well, that's why. 
That's why. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> but game development has obviously gotten more costly since last generation. Reading between the lines, it seems like he's indicating the cost of even a small VR title for a big developer to be somewhere in the range of $20 million. Now, this problem with VR has been highlighted in other ways over the last couple weeks as well, so this isn't some kind of outlier. In a thread that's now blown up on the Vive subreddit, Daisy creator Gene Hall went on a pretty big rant about there not being any money in VR, saying his studio is probably done with VR development. Other developers had to take some rather weird steps to get that money however they can. Last <laughs> week we got- <laughs> Step, Stepping out a leg, you know <laughs> yeah. what it takes. Gotta get the quiche. <laughs> <laughs> Last week we got word of Vertigo Games, who locked content for their VR zombie game Arizona Sunshine behind a hardware wall. Huh? Yeah. Meaning only gamers with the right i7 CPU model could play the game's horde mode. It's, it's all about the quiche. Yeah, it comes back to the quiche, always. <laughs> After players freaked out about it, the developer did come clean that this was actually due to an exclusivity deal with Intel locking content for an entire quarter so that anyone who didn't have a fifth, sixth, or seventh generation i7 couldn't really play it. Uh, players cried foul and you can't really blame them, but when sales for VR titles are generally so low, developers have to make their money somehow and sometimes that comes in the form of partnerships like that one. Who will give you the money if the gamers can't? Yeah. All that being said, shaking up the company might not be all bad news for Oculus because VR has been getting traction in another vertical, mobile devices. Yeah, so far it's estimating that Samsung Gear VR has done 2.3 million in sales. Uh, even though it wasn't ever supposed to be the core product for Oculus, it's by far outselling the Rift, which is estimated at around 355,000 in sales. The needs of high-end PC gaming, mobile devices, and the social spaces that Facebook wants to use VR for are all wildly different. So it's just as possible that Oculus's new structure will help them better focus on each of these core components and might hopefully lead to better games and experiences in the long run. Also microtransactions and people can advertise straight to your eyeballs. Hooray! <laughs> it's also important to note that with Facebook's backing, Oculus is prepared to invest money for the long haul. But this might also signal a little bit of shift that a lot of people maybe didn't expect. For a long time, the industry has considered gaming to be the first frontier for VR adoption. And so far, unfortunately, that just hasn't been the case, at least not for the high end VR. Obviously, PlayStation VR is doing better. Yeah, your luxury VR we're talking about yes. here. Yeah, like clean, cleans your car for you. Requires a double after, quiche. After you go to Skyrim. <laughs> um, and even cheaper models like the PSVR are vastly underselling what was originally predicted. Analysts thought Sony would move somewhere in the neighborhood of 2 million plus headsets by the end of the year. Only now that number is looking closer to 750,000. Which, to be clear, is still outselling the other headsets. Yeah. It's just less than half of what they thought it was gonna be doing. That said, it seems like every single estimate for VR has been insanely rosy. I would love to know what their basis for those predictions were, but for whatever reason, gamers just aren't as taken with VR as many assume they would be. It might be the cost, it might be the specialty hardware that you have to have unless it's PlayStation VR. Yeah, it might be that people wanna see people instead of putting things on their faces and ignoring everything. So overall, the growth and adoption for VR gonna have to come from other areas. And right now, seems like it's in the mobile and VR video spaces. So while this move could seem to spell gloom and doom, losing a CEO isn't exactly a sign of success, it also means Oculus is adjusting to what consumers want out of VR for right now. And who knows, maybe those better games will follow at some point. Some point. What do you guys think of Oculus' CEO stepping down? Is it bad news for VR? Or should, do you think mobile is like really the way to go? Everyone complains about strapping a phone to your face, but if that's what consumers are doing, kind of hard to you argue know what I'm with. Saying? I'm saying CEO, YOLO, live your life, you gotta follow the quiche. Follow okay? the quiche. That's what I'm saying. That's our life motto. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know if you also follow the quiche down in the comments. Yeah. And for future updates on virtual or, let's face it, any other kind of reality, like this video and subscribe to the now. Quiche time. Well, yeah. <laughs> Can we just like pop up a picture of quiche? Yeah. Every time, Every time we say that. What, what, about a, what about a quiche filled with cash? <laughs> it's gonna be a big quiche run because I, I have another video coming out where I, I was really heavy on the quiche in the that quiche? too. I was running yes. the strip club and I was like, we gotta get the quiche. <laughs> gotta.